All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 13th day of October in the year of our Lord, 2023. And uh, what I thought I saw the other day actually has been confirmed. Uh, years ago, um, in one of Israel's assaults on Gaza, I saw them using white phosphorus airburst shells on the city in civilian areas. White phos Use of white phosphorus against Civilians is a war crime. Israel has never been prosecuted for its crimes against humanity. It's war crimes. And it should be. Because of what they suffered in World War II, they seem to be immune. But they do the same kind of acts toward others. Fallen humanity is fallen humanity. And there is no exceptions based on ethnicity or religion. Uh, only in Jesus Christ is there salvation and a freeing from the bondage to, to wickedness. And we see this. Wickedness express, uh, especially expresses itself when you are in a position of unrestrained power. And Israel is demonstrating their true nature before the entire world. They are not the people of God. They are cut off through unbelief, as the scripture says. And even in the Old Testament, uh, uh, God often drove them out of the land that he temporarily let them use because of their wickedness and unbelief. And the same thing's happening today. So I just saw this. This is from uh, RT, which seems to have news that you can't find in the West because uh, the, the Western world has become totally apostate and antichrist. They serve their master, the devil. Uh, Washington seems to be a headquarters, as Satan has his throne there, apparently, in the Oval Office, right behind the puppet. Humanity, fallen humanity, are slaves of the devil. The, he is the one working in the children of disobedience, the children of Adam. That is why Jesus said you must be born again. God has to do something in you to free you from that. And even then, when we're, as long as we're in these mortal bodies, we are not entirely free from the influence of sin. Uh, so here, uh, Israel use of fo white phosphorus has been verified. Human Rights, rights Watch, uh, Israel accused earlier, this was the third today, uh, the tenth, Israel accused of using restricted weapons. Yes, I saw this. I saw this in videos, although it was a long shot, uh, probably like this one uh, in the lower uh, screen here, uh, the lower image. And I thought, jeepers, that looks like white phosphorus. Are they, are they using that again? Again, uh, several decades ago in one of Israel's invasions of Gaza, it was obvious they were using white phosphorus. And the media and everything else, the United States, said Nothing that demonstrates how evil, evil and complicit the United States is. They probably got these shells from the United States. There are military applications of white phosphorus where it would be permitted, but you do not use it on civilians, ever. You shouldn't be using it on human beings, ever. For certain purposes, like if you wanted to burn away brush or you need a smoke screen or something like that, white phosphorus has been used but you have to use it properly. Uh, otherwise, it's a banned weapon, and, and especially on civilians, it's a banned weapon. In a civilian a city, it's absolutely impermissible to use it on a, a civilian a city where there's civilians. Just can't do it. But some people are lawless, and the United States is a, has a lawless government, 
And Israel has a lawless government. The current government in Israel is the most radically white, a right wing, uh, wicked government that's ever been in Israel. It is just awful. So let's take a look at that. And I want to. Sh this just has to do with this whole thing. Uh, let's go to. Uh, I'll bring up this particular individual here that's part of the Netanyahu government. Now, what you have to understand is Netanyahu, uh, because he has a weak government, he's in a very weak position, in order to get power and stay in power, he, uh, well, he, he made alliances with the worst rogues in Israel. And this is one of those rogues. And gave them high office and high... You know, uh, in a parliamentary system, it is uh, to the highest bidder. If you need to form a, major a majority because you don't have a, ma a majority party, you have to make alliances with small parties until you get that majority vote to be able to form a government. And Net Netanyahu uh, chose to go after, well, because of his weakness and his uh, legal and moral uh, handicaps, he went to the uh, ones that were willing to sell their position in order to get power because they're small normally and don't have a vote, don't have a voice, a significant voice. So this is one of the rogues, and this man is responsible for what happened on that sat last Saturday, the, uh, the Hamas. Uh, he is directly responsible for it, for what he did on Thursday before that Saturday. Itamar Ben Gvir is an Israeli lawyer. <laughs> yeah, you heard about shyster lawyers. Here's one. And politician who serves as Minister of National Security. This is like internal security. You know, like the KGB kind of thing. Internal police. In the United States, it'd be like the FBI. And, but it was a state police force, so it's it is, uh, uh, Israel doesn't have a federal system. Not big enough for that. Uh, anyway, there are counties bigger than Israel, I think, in Texas. Uh, well, maybe not quite, but. He is additionally a member of the Knesset, so he holds a position, a seat in parliament, and the head uh, leader of Atzma Yehudit, a radical right-wing religious party. I mean, this is, uh, whose political position is described as far right. You know, like you talk about the the uh, NAZI party as being far right, that kind of party, far right. Uh, like uh, Ku Klux Klan, maybe, or... What else? In the United States, there's not an equivalent. There's not an equivalent at all in the United States. This would be like skinheads kind of uh, position. There, there is no equivalent in the United States to, to what this guy is, as far as elected office. Ben Gavir, a settler from Israeli-occupied West Bank. In other words, he is one of the ones that are illegally occupying Palestinian territory. And it is illegal. It is illegal. They have just seized areas and settled there. These are squatters. They are occupying land unlawfully, and they've, Israel has been working for decades to, to put so many there that it's almost impossible to get them out. And the ideology, uh, it, it goes back to a very corrupted view of the Old Testament. God did not unconditionally give Israel that land. It was always conditional, and he has dispossessed them because of their bad behavior, shall we say, multiple times in the past. Uh, the last time he dispossessed them was, uh, well, 170, uh, 70 A.D. and then 135 in the two Jewish re revolts. 70 A.D., God destroyed the temple because it was obsolete, wasn't needed anymore. You don't need a temple because God had given the Messiah, the final answer, God's answer to the human fall. 
But most of Israel rejected the Messiah, would not receive him. And, uh, well, they, they waged a civil war against Rome, which was a big mistake and lost uh, in a terrible destruction, which was, Jesus predicted, it was a judgment of God on Israel, uh, for uh, those who rejected God's Messiah. Without, only in God's Messiah is there salvation. You cannot have a relationship with God apart from Jesus Christ. You can't. He is the atonement. He is the, uh, the one mediator between God and man. Without him, well, you are on God's bad side. And subject, uh, and his, uh, his anger abides on you, which is from John chapter 3, verse 36, the same chapter where, where uh, Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. While those who refuse to believe, the wrath or anger of God abides still on them because they've rejected the only way to be at peace with God. God provided a sacrifice for our sins, for the sins of the entire world. And those who reject that, well, they don't have a, a good relationship with God. Uh, they, are, they are hostile to God. And God has a place prepared for them because they refuse what he has done in Christ, on the cross. They have trampled the blood of Jesus Christ underfoot. Not only Jews, but everyone who re rejects uh, the salvation God purchased on the cross with the blood of his own son. Okay, Gavir here, uh, so he's a settler, so he's already, uh, well, under international law, he'd be a criminal. <laughs> right there. Uh, he has stolen other people's land. Uh, has faced charges of hate speech against speech against Arabs, uh, and was known to have his por to have a portrait in his living room of an Israeli American terrorist Barack Goldstein, who massacred 29 Palestinian Muslims worshippers and wounded 125 others in Hebron. I can sort of remember when that was in the news. I have seen that building. I have been there. The Cave of the Patriarchs, uh, and it's generally a place for Muslim worship. He removed the portrait. So he, on his wall, honored this terrorist, this Jewish terrorist, murderer. This is the kind of guy this is. This guy is a member of Netanyahu's government, a cabinet member in charge of internal security. All right, so he was previously convicted of supporting the terrorist group known as Koch, Koch and espoused uh, Kahen, Kahenism, uh, an extremist religious ideal, uh, Jewish ideology. Uh, um, a rabbi named Kahani, when I, he was active when I was over in Israel in 1985. He was just the wicked of the wicked. Uh, hated, you know, the, the, the idea of Jewish... Uh, exceptionalism. Jew, God, Jews are God's people, and everybody else is trash, are animals, subhuman. That is pretty much Kahani. And this man uh, espoused it, that ideology. Kahani was assassinated. Uh, I suppose he was a martyr for this guy. Th this guy is as extreme as you can get. This is this is skinhead, neo-Nazi level stuff. And he's in the cabinet in charge of internal security. Netanyahu threw Israel under the bus in order to get his personal power as, as a prime, a prime minister back and to stay out of prison. I have no respect. I met that man once. I once had some respect for him. I actually shook his hand once, I believe. This was long before he was in a powerful position. I think he was serving in the, probably the consulate in Chicago at that time. And he was at, at a local church 
that was a, a great backer of Israel. And part of their belief system was there that you never tell the gospel to a Jew. Oh, they were really a Christian church. They went way overboard in the, the uh, pro-Israel stuff. They were just drunk on it. And uh, I wasn't a member there. And like, But back then, I did drink the, the pro-Israel Kool-Aid because that Christian believers, Bible believers, support Israel. <sighs> no, you shouldn't. You should not be supporting Israel as it is today. You don't support wickedness, and that's what's going on. This is just plain evil. Not that there isn't plenty of evil to go around on all sides. This is not saying that Israel, uh, that, that Hamas is a good thing. No, it's a bad thing. It's, there is hatred toward others baked into both that form of uh, Islam and to especially this form of Judaism. Probably worse in this form of Judaism. Uh, Islam is not an exclusivist, racist system. Uh, they have, Israel isn't quite either, but uh, it is, uh, it's not, it, it's, everyone can be a Muslim. It's not the same as, uh, as this kind of racist uh, uh, religious Zionism that we have here. And Zionism is not a, really a majority view among Jews worldwide anyway. A lot of them reject it. But uh, this is uh, very extremist. So Kahani, uh, he was, uh, I believe, he was banned. Convicted and banned, I believe. He was just bad. So uh, he espouses uh, Kahanism and anti-Arabism. Uh, so again, it'd be like a, a, a Ku Klux Klan, uh, old school Ku Klux Klan, or even more so like a, like a skinhead uh, kind of hatred toward everyone else. Not just uh, uh, Muslims, but Christians too. There's most of Christian um, Palestinian Christians have pretty much been driven out because they were getting it from both sides. Even though that they were the uh, once, uh, you know, of course, going back to uh, to followers of Jesus in the first century, the original Christian Palestinians. Ben Gavir is widely known. Uh, okay, I read that already. Ben Gavir has been long accused of being a provocateur. That's a person who deliberately provokes an incident for his own purposes, or for his party's purposes. A provocateur. Uh, there's been uh, accusations of that, in which happened in, in, uh, uh, in January 6th in Washington, that that government agents were were provoking and leading people to do unlawful acts, like enter the Capitol building. There's been accusations of it. There's, of course, that whole thing was so rigged that the trial was so rigged that there's no justice in Washington. <laughs> it's like what they've done with Trump. Not that you should vote for Trump, but the, 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 the legal system has been weaponized. And that's exactly what we have here. Internal security is weaponized. So he's been a provocateur. He has a history of provoking incidences with the Palestinians. Christians don't provoke quite as easily. We generally choose to suffer rather than to, to respond violently. Islam is not Christian. You have to understand that. In their belief system, no, you don't suffer silently. You strike back, if you can at all. So that's, it's, there were different, really different religions entirely. Uh, Islam is not Christianity. It's not related to Christianity. Nor is Judaism. No, it isn't. Uh, too often Christians and people that read the Bible, Bible-believing Christians, get the idea that, that Jews are just like Christians, except they, they haven't really come to the knowledge of the Messiah. No, it's they are hostile toward God, hostile toward all men, according to the New Testament, uh, the, the Apostle Paul. And they manifest that. 
And the, the very attitude, it's like the American exceptionalism is what enabled, and Manifest Destiny, what, what enabled Americans to be so wicked uh, in regard to Native Americans. That massacring friendly tribes, like the Sand Creek Massacre. I have no pity for Custer at all. But that, uh, that the Custer's Massacre just brought down even more wrath from the government on uh, the natives. So it was, they were just in the way. It's sort of like the Palestinians. It's very much similar to the Palestinians in, in Israel. They are in the way of Jewish manifest destiny to try to put an American context on it. It's like the Native Americans in this country were in the way. That's why they had to go. Because they were in the way. They were an inconvenient thing. And Custer's Massacre served the purpose of those who wanted to get rid of them because they used that to justify uh, just going in with much more military power, launching a campaign of elimination, annihilation against them. Genocide. The American government was uh, had a policy of gen gen genocide. The only good Indian is a dead Indian, was a popular motto. Is that a Christian attitude? Absolutely not. The Christian attitude is Christ died for them too. We need to tell them about that. That is Christian. Christ died for the sins of the entire world. Okay, so uh, yeah, on January 3rd, 2023, this year, he visited the Temple, Mach, Mach, uh, Temple Mount, I'm getting ahead of myself, where the Alaska Mosque is located, spurring an international wave of criticism that labeled his visit as purposely provocative. Yes. Yes, he has a history of this. Now, let's take a look. He was, he, uh, was associated with uh, the, the IDF, the, the uh, Israeli uh, Defense Forces, would not accept him for mandatory service because he was too much of an extremist. Right here. This article is on Wikipedia. Go read it. They also have an article uh, about the current government, the 37th Israeli government. You'll hear about all the radicals that uh, Netanyahu invited to join and what the deals they made. So you've got the most radical elements in charge of Israel. This is, this is a... Uh, and, of course, they're trying to seize absolute power. The, the current Knesset under Netanyahu and this coalition, that you've heard perhaps about the court reform issue. What it is trying to, what they're trying to do is strip the Jewish uh, high court, Supreme Court or whatever they call it over there, of the, uh, of the review of laws. So just like in the United States, if the Congress passes a law that is contrary to the Constitution, the Supreme Court can throw the law out, rule it as unconstitutional. Same thing exists essentially in Israel. And what the Netanyahu coalition, this radical group that's there now, wants to do and has, is trying to do is to uh, strip the court of the power of judicial review of laws. So the uh, Knesset can pass whatever they want, and the courts can't strike it down. Do you understand? That's totalitarianism. They want absolute power in order to do what? Ethnically cleanse Israel, apparently. Uh, people like this Ben Gavir, that is what he wants, and not only him. Others that Netanyahu brought in. Netanyahu is responsible for this this wicked government that's currently in Israel. This is the most extremist, evil government that has ever existed in Israel. They've never had a truly religious government anyway. It's generally has been secular in the past. Uh, and they tried to work out the, the issues, but then, of course, Israel was founded by secularists, secular Zionists, not 
religious Zionists. Secular could be more tolerant than religious because, I, well, when you think that everything you say is the will of God, then you've got a problem. And everybody else has a problem. So, uh, again, the people that he was associated with is absolutely, uh, he was, uh, let's see, in, in 2007, he was convicted for incitement to racism. Racism against who? Palestinians, in particular. But uh, there is an attitude among uh, some Jews, I want to be careful to put this properly, some, that if you're not Jewish, you're, you're less than human. You are less than human. And uh, that's why I say it's like skinhead ideology or some others, uh, the... Uh, the ideology of Germany during the last century, during the period of time. Got to speak a little carefully because of the algorithm around here. But, uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. That they, they massacred all kinds of people, including Jews, because they viewed them as less than human for not being Aryan. You recall that, right? Or have heard about it. So here, uh, this guy is a total radical, and what he got, let's see, can I bring that up? Uh, I don't want to bring it up here. He made a deal, Netanyahu made a deal with the devil on this, is this guy, Ben Gavir, uh, in order to become part of Netanyahu's cabinet, agree to that and, and give his votes and his party's votes to, to Netanyahu as part of the coalition, he negotiated terms, and so did the others. Look up 37th Israeli government, or 37th government of Israel, or however, something like that it, on Wikipedia, and you'll find out the description. Not only did he get the, uh, the Ministry of National Security, in other words, in part of internal enforcement, police, and internal force troops. He got a, a, a Netanyahu agreed to create a, a, a how can you say this? A, a national guard, a a uh, paramilitary national guard. We've heard about those in Latin America uh, uh, under a particular person, a warlord that is under his personal direction. So he's got his own uh, personal National Guard forces uh, to use at his own discretion. If you don't think that is crazy and wicked, and, I mean, you don't know anything about recent history at all, the, the massacres that went on in places like, like Argentina and others, uh, the fighting between different factions, and the so-called National Guard uh, paramilitary units. They're, they're just, they're, they're like, well, in Germany, they had the brown shirts, followed by the black shirts, which were really Hitler's personal bodyguards, the elite that had the little insignias with two S's on them. Again, because of YouTube. AI, you know. So this man, what happened? Let's get to the point. What happened here? On the Thursday before Saturday when Hamas rose up, this man staged a provocation. As Israel's internal security minister, somewhere around 1,500 right-wing settlers, radical settlers and religious Zionists, uh, the kind of people that supported Koch and Kahani, the radical fringe racist element in Israel, 
the, the worst of the worst. Every culture has them, okay? Like the skinheads in America and some others, and Ku Klux Klan, and, well, some of them are worse. Skinheads are worse than those. The worst elements. That's what he's associated with. So he brings these people, about 1,500 of them, religious Zionists, a pure Israel, nobody else allowed, you know, as God's holy people, supposedly, except they're cut off by God <laughs> uh, because of they refused to receive the Messiah. They rejected God's salvation. That's why they're cut off. And they act like it, too. But this is, he, he staged this provocation where he brought these 15, roughly 1,500 settlers and radicals up on the Temple Mount, up in the uh, uh, Muslim holy area, the uh, what's called the uh, the compound of the El Aska Mosque. That 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 area up there is the top of the uh, what's called the top of the Temple Mount, which is a place of Muslim worship, not Jewish worship, Muslim worship, and it does not belong to Israel. Uh, Net, um, Moshe Dayan, when he conquered Jerusalem in the Six-Day War, returned the Temple Mount to the, the uh, Muslim uh, wafq, to the Muslim religious authorities, because he didn't want a huge war with all of Islam. This guy does. This guy's a provocateur. He wants to provoke that. And he deliberately did this as a provocation, a claim that this is our mountain, this is our territory, this is our place of worship, it doesn't belong to the Muslims. It was a provocation to demonstrate a claim to, to the Jewish authority and sovereignty over the top of that site. Deliberately, to provoke them. Why would he deliberately want to provoke Hamas and the rest of the Muslims? Because he wanted to create, I would say, my opinion, this is my opinion, that he, uh, because this guy is a provocateur, he wanted to provoke a confrontation, he wanted to provoke a Hamas to do something crazy in response in order to destroy them. In order for an excuse to destroy Hamas and to drive Palestinians out of the country. That's his end goal, to eliminate the Palestinians one way or the other. These kind of people, like Kahani, who he admires and was a follower of, that was the goal. I mean, Kahan, those people were Israeli. The Israeli courts convicted them of, of terrorism. Like this guy is apparently worshiping this, this uh, uh, Israeli American terrorist, Barack Goldstein, that massacred 29 Muslims at uh, the, the Cave of the Patriarchs in Hebron. In a place of Muslim worship, he goes in there and guns them down. And this guy had his picture on the wall in his house. It's like going into somebody's house and there's a picture of Adolf Hitler on the wall. No difference. Demonstrating his admiration of a terrorist. So what did he want to provoke? Exactly what's happening now. So he did this on Thursday. Saturday, Hamas responded with their very sophisticated and well-organized response. Uh, Over-the-top response, uh, a savage, vicious response, which is exactly what this man wants and others like him. They want to so provoke the, the Jewish people there that there will be a, a massacre. There will be a destruction of the Palestinians, one way or the other, driving them out or just eliminating them. That's what he wants to provoke. And he did. He did. That's what's going on now. 
He's manipulating things. And Netanyahu ought to be imprisoned, not before, for his corruption, but for putting uh, people like this guy, Gavir, in high places. Netanyahu selling out Israel for his own personal advantages and personal power. At this, the negotiations is like simony. Well, the United States does it too. How much uh, will you pay me to put you in that position? Or what? What? Or they come and say, "Well, we'll we'll join your coalition, but we want this and this and this." And so you you sell out the interest of, of, of Israel, of the people of Israel, in order to put yourself in power. So I used to sort of respect Netanyahu, not anymore. He's revealed what he is. And Israel, by doing this, is revealing that they're not the victims. They are the victimizers. They're, they're exposing themselves as no better than the worst of others, no better than Hamas, actually worse than Hamas, because Israel's got the power. They are the oppressors, and their their final solution to the Palestinian problem is to remove the Palestinians one way or the other. That's the government we have in Israel now, and Christians, if you support Israel, you are complicit with them. The United States is complicit because right now. They are shipping bombs to Israel to use on Gaza. Shipping the, the plane loads of weapons have already begun to land to replenish their stock of bombs and shells. You do that. You arm a, a, uh, a state engaged in war crimes, you're complicit in those crimes especially while it's happening, and you know it's going on, and you arm them, you resupply them so they can kill more. You are accessories to murder, accessories to genocide. You are a war criminal yourself. That's what the United States is doing. Don't support these people. Don't support these people. Support those who love peace who actually seek God. This guy's God is himself. He's not the God of the Bible at all. But people will misuse scriptures to justify their own wicked, wicked motives. People like Gavir. They're not serving God, they're serving God's adversaries. 